You, most of us have seen what's going on in the political realm. A lot of socialism is, is being uh, promoted slowly and surely, and it didn't start with this current administration. It started way back when. Socialism is necessary for this country to prosper at all. Um, public schools, public fire departments, public police officers, uh, you know, our military, those are all part of socialism. Without those institutions, we wouldn't exist. When all these executive orders began to give away our wealth, and who knows where it all is now. Executive orders did not give away our wealth. We are down because uh, you know the, the top 1% is not paying their fair share in taxes. Um, and, uh, you know, there's all these big wars that they profited, profited off of with the, the you know, military industrial complex, you know, the war in Iraq that cost us, you know, trillions of dollars, the war in Afghanistan that cost us trillions of dollars, you know, these are not from executive orders. Those were things that Congress enacted. So, you know, you're completely off base with that. I've noticed that we are being slowly divided by ethnic, by by political parties, by just just about everything that they can figure out to keep us divided, they're doing so. People in this country, especially minorities, have more rights now than they have ever before. Uh, you know, we have more gay rights. We have, um, you know, the enforcement of the First Amendment for more minority religions, so that people like myself can practice their religion freely. Um, you know, we have uh, rights for for blacks. We have, you know. Uh, you know, non-discriminational laws from the Civil Rights Act of 1964, people with disabilities are no longer being discriminated against. So I'm not really sure exactly where this divide, the division comes from, except for division on ideology. Uh, people who want to create an other, you know, who call people who don't agree with them the enemy. That's really the only division that we have, and it's people like you who create it. Because you're the ones using the words like the enemy and they. Nobody else is doing that. You are. So if anybody's dividing anybody, it's you. Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, Tea Partiers, and every other true American who loves our Constitution, that we lay down our division and embrace the God of our founding. They're even trying to take that away from us. I just was on the website and saw some ridiculous article how our founding fathers were not Christians. See, the they thing really bothers me because you're the one who's talking about other people dividing us, and it really seems like you're the one who's dividing us. Furthermore, there are non-Christian founding fathers to this country. Thomas Paine was one of them. He wrote books, you know, scathing books about how much he hated Christianity that they heard. There's no doubt that the pilgrims, before they even set foot on land, made a covenant uh, with God. And even the 13 colonies, they all did, made covenants with God. Yes, there's non-Christians alike, but we were based on biblical principles, not to be a, 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 a theocracy, but to be a republic. A little known fact that you might not know is that not all the colonies were based on religion. In fact, Rhode Island was the first colony to separate church and state way before the Constitution. So you're way off base here. Uh, there was religious freedom before this country was even a country. And so the, the idea that we're somehow linked inextricably to the Bible is ridiculous. It just happens to be the majority religion in this country. But this country is for everybody, and all religions are respected. We came here, he gave us this nation based upon the principles taught in the Word of God. This country wasn't given to us. It was taken from the Native Americans. But you're right about one thing. The taking of this country was taken on this biblical principle. If you look in the Bible, it says specifically that you can, you know, take over other nations, especially if the people that are, don't have the same culture or religion as you do. 
and you know take them over and force them into Christianity and all that great stuff. And if they don't, then you can slaughter them and pillage them and, and you know do all these horrible things to them. And if you you know I can provide several links of all the horrible things that, that Americans did to the Native Americans in this country. And you know yet for some reason you seem to think that you have the moral religion that, that condones the, the rape and slaughter of innocents. Never has there been a nation on earth that had such things taught. Built into our Constitution, you'll see the principles taught from the Ten Commandments. and various parts of scripture on our plaques and monuments in Washington. You'll see quotes of scripture. And pretty much all of our government's uh, older buildings are modeled after ancient Greek pagan architecture. In the early part of our American government, some of the, even the political figures were required to be members of churches before they could be considered good citizens. There is no religious test for public office. As a matter of fact, if you want to talk about separation of church and state, it was that Congress shall make no laws prohibiting the free exercise of religion. It's because we've been beaten down. It's because in the early 60s they took God out of our school, saying we can't pray in school anymore. And then you know what happened to the school since the 60s. Those of us, I'm um, 50 some years old, those of you who know how it was back then. I remember back in those days, one of the biggest crimes was having your shirt tail out or chewing bubble gum. Now it's guns, killing knives. But yet we got God out of school, didn't we? What happened was even the secular news stations all reported that Americans were flooding the churches by the millions, calling upon God, asking God when our prosperity was attacked, when our nation was attacked. You see, you can't drive a Ford and not and deny Henry Ford. You can't. You can't be conservative and follow its principles and deny the God who gave us life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, I don't think that anywhere in the Bible is the idea of Christianity the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> um, no. Um, in fact, Jesus talks a lot about being uh, humble and uh, have suffering uh, for your religion and, and all those types of things. And Christianity has never really been about happiness. It's been about suffering for, for your God. And um, really, the idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness comes more from the Greek tradition, um, where the, the, you know, the ancient Greeks really did pursue their happiness and pursue um, who they were as humans to the fullest degree. Um, the idea of democracy and the Republic comes from the Greco-Roman tradition. And um, you'll see that this is evident by, if you just look at Washington, D.C., and look at the monuments in Washington, D.C., what are they modeled after? They're not modeled after buildings in, you know, Jerusalem or Galilee. They're modeled after Greek and Roman buildings <laughs> because that is the influence to our country. It's pretty simple. Um, there may be some founding fathers that have Christian influence, but that doesn't mean that this entire country is based on biblical principles. Um, in fact, you know, you admitted yourself that there were other non-Christians that were here in this country. So, you know, it's not fair to say majority rules when it's pretty obvious that the Constitution says that it protects the minority from the tyranny of the majority. It's amazing to me that since we've kicked prayer out of school, look what happened. Abortion. Adultery. I have a question for all you people who want prayer back in school, okay? You know that we're not allowed to discriminate based on religion, so therefore some of your teachers are not going to be Christian. In fact, I happen to know a satanic kindergarten teacher, okay? 
She's a Satanist. She's a kindergarten teacher. Now, if you want teachers to lead prayers, it's going to be against their religion to lead a, a Christian prayer, especially the Satanist. So therefore, in her class, she'd be leading a Satanic prayer. Are you sure you really want prayer in school? And now there's even some talk of polygamy being started up. It's, it's just amazing. You know what we should do? We should run back to the God of the King James Bible. We should repent, just like Israel did. You know, when Israel forgot about God, they were carried off. They were carried off into captivity. Another nation took them over. And look what's happening to America. We are forgetting about God. And we are being carried off. Our nation is being devoured before our very eyes. Taken over. Not from an enemy without, but from the enemy within. By enemy, he means all the people that don't think like him. Just to let you know. And the enemy within is sin, in our sin nature. We need the God of the Bible to give us back the liberties of our nation, to stop killing our children. Israel did the same thing. They gave up their children to the God of Baal. They laid their babies on brazen altars. Now we give our babies to Planned Parenthood and groups like that. If you're a Republican and you voted against universal health care, you're responsible for the death of thousands upon thousands of children. So please, before you talk about, you know, abortion and, and other things like that, please look at your own voting record because when you vote against a health pro care program that helps children and pregnant mothers, you are killing those children by voting against it. And so if you really care about kids, you'll vote for universal health care. How long will God withhold his judgment? Only he knows. I know this. He says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Quite typical of a preacher. You know, they'll try to talk, talk to you about how much more moral their religion is and then they say, if you don't believe me, God's wrath will come down on you. There's such a logical disconnect here. But, you know. Democrat, Republican, Independent, Conservatives, we can do nothing without God. We can't defeat this machine of immorality that's in Washington in both parties. We have to come back and flood our churches and call upon God once again. No, they're not airplanes flying into our buildings, but they're destroying our, our Constitution one principle at a time. You have not explained to me one bit how anybody is destroying the Constitution. The only kind of uh, misrepresentation of the Constitution that I've heard is you misrepresenting the First Amendment, where you only said part of it. 